What's going on guys? I'm in Advantage and welcome to Hut Tips, a 30 day video series designed to make you a better player in NHL 22. Over the next 30 days, we'll be covering everything you need to know both on and off the ice. From team building to offensive and defensive tips, as well as other ways to improve your game. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and click like. And if you'd like to follow along for the journey, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get right on into it. In today's video, we'll be talking about the best visual settings to use in NHL 22. It's important to note that visual settings shouldn't give you a disadvantage, but should rather give you an advantage in the game. So we'll be talking about which ones to just completely avoid, as well as ranking the top five. Although it's one of the cooler looking options, I would completely avoid action. The reason for it, just like a lot of the other ones in this category, it completely limits your visibility on about 30% of the ice. So as you can see, when I take the puck to either end of the ice here, I lose a visual of, well, basically half my team. So if you're playing competitively or plan to give yourself an advantage in the game, I would steer clear of action. If you want to feel like you're watching a hockey game, then you could throw it on broadcast or true broadcast. However, both of these, although they do look really cool, I would completely avoid. It's not going to give you any form of advantage. In fact, it's going to give you a massive disadvantage if you're trying to use either one of these in any competitive format. The last visual setting I would flat out just completely avoid is going to be dynamic low. Again, like a lot of these other ones, it's going to limit your visibility by at least 25% of the ice. And to me, that simply is not worth it. Coming in at number six on our list is dynamic medium. Now this is going to be the default visual setting that you receive whenever you start up NHL 22, which is why it's going to barely come in in our top somewhat usable category. Although it is going to limit some of your visibility, I would try to avoid it at all cost but it's at least somewhat usable for you. Coming in at number five is ice. Now it's going to be similar to classic, which we will get to here in just a little bit. However, the camera is going to veer with the puck. So as you can see where that puck is going, the camera is going to be slightly angled and falling where that puck's going. It's good for some instances. However, it's certainly going to limit some visibility, which is why it's ranking at number five on our list. And number four is dynamic high. Now it's very similar to dynamic medium, except it's of course zoomed out a bit more. I do like it. However, I don't really love it again because it's going to take away some of that ice visibility. And number three is classic. Now this used to be my favorite one to play with. However, as I started to become more competitive with the game, there are obviously some flaws with classic. It's going to be a pretty set and fixed camera for the most part. However, it's going to be one where I feel that you can still get the puck out of the zone. However, it's a little bit too zoomed for my liking, especially as you're trying to break the puck out of the zone. There's just two better visual settings that I would feel more comfortable with. The first of those visual settings is going to be zone. Now zone ranks number two on our list here. It's probably gonna give you the most visibility of the ice as you move up. However, the reason I don't like zone is whenever you do come back in your own zone, it is a little bit difficult to see that puck at the bottom of the screen, especially for players this year that like to work the puck around the net in your own zone. I find that it is a slightly disadvantageous there. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the angle that it's at. I feel like I'm almost leaned back in my chair whenever I'm playing with it. However, in my opinion, if you don't like the number one option, zone is going to be a good number two for you. Coming at number one on our list is going to be overhead. I'll give you my reasons why I like this one the best. First off is visibility. Obviously with overhead, you can see the majority of the ice and it's going to give you the most clear view as to what is happening out there. The reasons that's good is A, it's easy to break the puck out of your zone and B, it's easier to play defense because you can see what your opponent is trying to set up as time goes on. So in theory, you can avoid that play and at least put people in place to prevent pucks from getting into your net. Now, overhead it takes a little bit of getting used to as it's probably the most zoomed out of all these. However, if you can figure out how to play on overhead, I would certainly practice with this, but it's gonna allow you to win more games and score more goals. That's it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and click like. And if you'd like to follow along for more hut tips, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Again, I'm Main Advantage, and I will see you guys next time.